everybody. Uh, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about the business of essential oils. And uh, if you watched any of my other tapes, you know that my wife uh, got involved with essential oils and had great results. Uh, really helped her with some health and wellness issues. And uh, kind of turned some of my wellness issues around as well. And when she first got started with it, she was like, I'm just in this to feel better. I want to help people. And, uh, and that was great. And uh, then uh, she came to me and said, Mark, I like this so much. I've got all my friends wanting to use essential oils. I'd like to do this for a business. Oh, no, I thought, ah, oh, it's one of those multi-level marketing things. It's a pyramid scheme. What am I going to do? We're going to be shunned by all our friends. So I said, honey, uh, I'm a business guy. I've started businesses. I've led businesses. I've run them. I bought them. I've sold them. Uh, we don't want to do that. If you want to sell essential oils, and they're so great, let's just open up an uh, essential oil store. Uh, we can do that. And uh, she researched it, and she looked at all the people that grow, distill, and distribute uh, essential oils. And she said, no, it has to be Young Living. They're the only company that I want to use their essential oils. They're the only company that I trust uh, to deliver the essential oils and ensure that they're the right products. So I'm like, well, do they sell a franchise? No. Can you just go work for the company or in St. Louis? Nope. Uh, so it has to be a uh, network marketing approach. Yes, so I said, well, I guess I'm gonna have to go figure out about network marketing. And so uh, when you're looking at a business and you're trying to understand how it works, uh, you usually look at the value chain. So Michael Porter is a famous business expert, Princeton grad, went to Harvard, got his PhD in business from Harvard. Uh, wrote a lot of different books. One of the more famous ones was a book called Competitive Advantage. He wrote back in the, in the 80s. And he uh, kind of started people looking at uh, businesses from the value chain perspective. And he said almost every business, whether you're selling a product or a service, uh, can be looked at if you look at the value chain. And he organized a graphic that everybody uses when they look at company value chains. And We've got one up here that we're going to show you that is uh, pretty much the standard Porter value chain and it describes companies, whether it's a service or whether it's a product. And the company provides infrastructure, it provides human resources. Those are kind of the support organizations within that chart that they talk about. And the company also provides a series of activities that increase the value of the product or service that it's providing to a customer. So as you go through there and you do the incoming material and the logistics associated with that, you perform an operation and then you uh, market it and you sell and you support that product or that service. And then for that value that you've created by going through that process, you're able to charge a margin on it and make money when you sell to that customer. Well, I don't care what business it is, you can look at that business and describe what's the infrastructure that I have in place to support the business and what is the process that I go through? What is that value chain as I go through the process, adding value to the product or service as I go? So I said, well, let's look at Young Living, since that's what Karen wanted to uh, uh, work with and let's see what their value chain is. So I took the Porter chart and I kind of looked and I said, okay, so Young Living has a infrastructure. They have people, they have research, they have uh, buildings, they have farms, uh, they have a purchasing organization, they have people that go all over the world sourcing the best seeds for the plants that they want to grow and uh, and then they have these processes where they go out and they procure the seeds and then they go through their farm processes of planting and harvesting and distilling and then they uh, bottle and package and uh, then they have their outgoing uh, logistics of process ordering and delivery and shipping 
and then they have their uh, marketing and customer support. And they deliver those products to the customers. The slightly different thing that they do <clears throat> in their business model is that they uh, allow the customers to participate and become members to get discounts on the products. And, uh, and so the customers kind of move in and, and, and they participate to some degree in the marketing and customer support aspect, of it. especially those customers that decide they want to do this as a business and you can call those business builders and you can see on the slide there that we've highlighted a, a key part there of the customer set that now is strategically aligned with the company and actually becomes an extension of the company as independent distributors to market the product and to provide customer service so what these business builders are doing is they're adding value to that product by becoming experts in that product, by working with networks of people from around the world to better understand how these oils are used and to help promote and market those products to the people that they know and then provide customer service to those customers in the way of becoming experts. And that's really what Karen has done is she's become a, a, kind of an amazing expert over the last couple of years in working tirelessly to better understand the oils and and interact with people that have used them uh, to determine uh, the things that can they, that they can be used for to support wellness and, and improve vitality in people's lives. So if you look at the value stream from the perspective of Young Living, the customers, the business building customers become an integral part of the company. And, in a way, those independent distributors become uh, their own small value chain. So really, when you get down to it, uh, at least in Young Living's case, their network marketing or direct marketing or multi-level marketing or whatever name you want to put on it, uh, their business model is not a pyramid scheme. And don't get me wrong, there's, a, there's scams out there. There are a bunch of people out there trying to sell fictitious products that don't do anything that uh, uh, and trick people into signing up to be employees and forcing those employees to buy products. But if you're evaluating a network marketing opportunity and you want to understand whether it's a pyramid scheme or not, there's really just a handful of questions you have to ask to determine what's going on there. Uh, first of all, you know, is this business been around for a while or is it just something brand new that nobody's ever heard of? And uh, what did the reviewers say? Have you looked them up on the Better Business Bureau and saw what kind of rating those guys gave them? Uh, what about the products that they sell? Are they valuable products and services that they're giving? Or are they just kind of hearsay products that, that uh, nobody really knows what they are? Do they have a return policy? If you don't like the product, can you get it back? Can you get a credit for the products that you don't like? And how do they make money? Do they make money off the products? Or are they really making money off people subscribing to the business to try and convince other people to subscribe to the business? And <clears throat> what is the focus? Is the focus on selling and supporting the product? Uh, or is the focus really on just recruiting people and they don't really care if the people sell the product, just recruit more people? So in the case of Young Living, you know, if you say, well, how long have they been in business? Young Living's been uh, in business for nearly 30 years and they're the most the oldest and most respected uh, large essential oil distiller and distributor uh, in the country in the world and uh, go to the Better Business Bureau I did in fact when I was prepping for this video I looked them up I, I didn't know shame on me for not looking them up but they're an A plus rated company with a very high rank in their View scores, and you can go to the Better Business Bureau yourself. Check if I'm, what I'm telling you is true. Uh, do they sell a valuable product? Just ask my wife; she'll tell you. Well, you can ask me too. It's the, they've been remarkable for me. And uh, if you don't like the products, you can send them back and get credit for them. Uh, how do they make money? They make money off the products. They've done a great job over the past 30 years of discriminating their products in the marketplace. Uh, they are the highest quality. Uh, their seed to seal guarantee uh, ensures that they know everything about the process from the seeds that go in the ground, how they're harvested, uh, how they're maintained until they're harvested, 
how they're distilled and uh, how they're bottled and they know every step of the process and they control every step of the process so you know and you can put those uh, uh, oils on you can in, uh, diffuse those oils you can uh, uh, ingest some of those oils if you choose to do so uh, with full confidence that they're pure high quality therapeutic grade oils that are safe and can be trusted and uh, they focus on selling their oils for a long time all my wife did was bought oils and used them and it wasn't until she saw how many of her friends were being helped that she decided that uh, she wanted to be uh, doing it for a business and she went to the people that had brought her on board and asked them if she could do it for a business, not the other way around. So I, I feel comfortable that Young Living is doing the right thing and that Karen is not getting into a pyramid scheme, even though we may get shunned for it because everybody thinks every network marketing and MLM out there is a pyramid scheme. Easy for me to do a comparison from a traditional business to a network marketing business, at least with the Young Living case, because uh, I've had experience in that. Uh, some years ago, I started a chemical distribution business, uh, and it was uh, specialty chemicals. It wasn't essential oils, but it was uh, chemicals to a specific uh, industry sector, and I provided distribution and value-added services to that industry uh, and was able to mark up those products and got a margin off those products. And, uh, uh, but it was a fairly typical venture capital deal where I borrowed a lot of money, uh, leveraged everything I had, started this company, went out and created a bunch of contracts with companies to, to distribute these chemicals to them. And uh, it was successful. We, uh, I uh, ran it for about uh, seven years. I sold to a competitor, uh, made a lot of money. Uh, and uh, all the investors were happy, uh, but it didn't work out for everybody. It was, it was hard. When you start a traditional business and you're starting from scratch with no customers and you go out, you, you're at a lot of risk and you got to hire employees to do some of the work. You got to rent buildings, uh, you got to buy inventory and you got to go out and sell, 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 sell. And pretty soon if you do it right, you start catching up to where you're not, you're starting to make money and you're starting to get positive cash flow before the capital that you raised runs out. And that's the big uh, problem with a lot of businesses that are capitalized and they don't have enough money. And then when you're out of money and you don't have any, people don't want to loan you any money. So it was, uh, it was a lot of fun and it was a lot of work and it was a lot of risk. Uh, in my case, it was a great success uh, for those that, uh, for the investors, but it, you know, traditional companies have a pyramid shape to them too. The guys at the top make most of the money uh, and the guys at the bottom take less risk, but they don't make the same money. So you can take a traditional company like the one I started and you can compare it to starting a independent distributor uh, for a network marketing company like Young Living. So let's say that I was able to convince Karen that we should start a essential oil store rather than get caught in a pyramid scheme and a network marketing scam uh, and be shunned by our friends. And, uh, and well, we'll call our new company Acme Essential Oils. And uh, so we're going to compare Acme Essential Oils to being an independent distributor of Young Living products and what it's going to take to do that. So in Acme Essential Oils, I'm going to have a store and people don't want to walk into the store and not have anything to buy on the shelves. So I'm going to have to buy inventory. I'm probably going to have to borrow money to pay for the inventory but I'm surely gonna to have to spend at least $100,000, if not way more than that, to provide inventory so that my customers uh, can buy it. And if I'm gonna be a full distributor, even if I'm selling online and I gotta be a distributor and I'm going to sell it and ship it, I'm gonna have a warehouse full of stuff to sell. 
So plan on spending a lot of money to prepare for your inventory. Now, on the other hand, on Young Living, uh, to be an independent distributor, you have to spend $160. Oh my God, what an investment. Now you gotta be a member and you know you get a membership with the premium starter kit. And then once you're a member, you can uh, sell oils to people. It's pretty simple. You don't have to buy any more oils. You don't have certain quotas you gotta meet each month. If you wanna stop, you can stop. There's no pressure. Uh, pretty, pretty low pressure, pretty low risk situation. As far as the facility goes, well, I'm gonna open a store, Acme Essential Oil Company has to have a store, so uh, I gotta go lease a building. Well, how big a building do I get? Oh my gosh, they want me to sign a three year lease. Uh, I've got a bunch of money going out of pocket to pay for that building. Well, I better not do a store. I better do an online store. Oh, but I gotta have a place to store it. Well, maybe I can do it in my garage. Get the picture, a lot of money, a lot of decisions you have to make, a lot of investment up front with the hope that you're gonna be able to sell some products. With Young Living, what kind of facility do you need? You don't. Uh, be nice to have a computer so that you can log onto the internet and track things. Uh, but you really don't need that. What you need is uh, the ability to tell people about what the products have done for you and uh, help them figure out how the products could help them. So I'm going to start a company, Acme Oil, an essential oil store. I need an accountant to do the bookkeeping because I hate accounting. Uh, I better get a lawyer to help me uh, set up the corporation. Ah, should it be a C Corp, an S Corp, an LLC, sole proprietorship? <coughs> I don't know. A lot of decisions you got to make, and you got to spend a lot of money with these lawyers to help you figure out what you got to do. What you got to do. And uh, with Young Living, uh, you don't have to do any of that. Now, like us, you may want to set up an LLC as you get going and you start making money, but uh, not a big decision and not a big investment. Uh, oh, employees. We got to have employees. I can't be at the store 24 seven. How am I going to pay them? Well, I better have some money to pay them until we start making money so that I don't have to lay them. What if they're bad? Oh my gosh, what if I have to fire them? It's no fun to convince people to come work for you in a new company and then figure out that they can't do the job and you have to let them go. Man, what a pain. Well, how does that work with Young Living? Well, you don't really. You use the products, you share with other people about the products, and if they want to sell the products, they can. If they want to use the products, that's great. If they start selling products under you and you're getting commission off what they sell, that's great. If they don't sell that much, you don't get that much commission. They don't get that much commission. You're building your team, uh, but it's really, they're going to make as much money as they want to invest the time to make. And if they don't make a lot of money, it's because they're not investing the time and putting in the effort to make the money. You don't have to beat them up and say, you're not making money. You're not pulling your weight. You're fired. Uh, some people may like doing that. I don't like doing that. But with the young living, you really don't have any employee issues. Everybody kind of pulls their own weight or they don't make money. And, uh, you know, in the traditional business, the people that put in the original money and the people that own the company, they're the ones that make all the real money. And, uh, the lower level, entry level employees, it takes a long time and a lot of effort to work up. And you really, in a lot of companies, you're never going to become the CEO. You're never going to become the owner, uh, no matter how hard you work. But in uh, a network marketing, Karen could meet somebody tomorrow and they could start selling oils and they could pass her up and make way more money than she's ever going to make. And they have the ability to do that based on how hard they work and how much success they have and communicating the value of these products to other people. So in Acme Essential Oil Company, what's the risk? Well, let's see. I bought a bunch of inventory. I signed a long-term lease on a facility. I had paid for a bunch of lawyers and attorneys and accountants. And uh, I sold my soul to these venture capitalists over here to 
to put their money in it. I hired a bunch of employees and I don't know how I'm going to pay for them. And half of them aren't doing what they need to do for this company to be successful. Oh my gosh, the risk is huge. With the Young Living business that Karen started, um, what's the risk? She doesn't have employees that she has to worry about. She doesn't have a big money investment. She can work whatever hours she wants. If she sells a lot of oils, great, she makes good money. If she doesn't sell a lot of oils, she doesn't. But it's not a big risk because she doesn't have the money that she's invested into it. She's not paying interest. She's not paying leases on buildings. The big risk with her and Young Living is, oh my gosh, I may get shunned. So at any rate, that's the comparison between the two. So I, I don't know if you're sitting here thinking about um, starting a independent distributorship for Young Living products and you're worried about it being a pyramid scheme. Uh, I would tell you it's not. I would tell you it's not a big risk. I would tell you that uh, I've met a lot of people that have been very successful at this. I would tell you that the products are great. Uh, they are products that have been used for thousands of years by people all over the world to promote health and wellness. So I guess the difference between a quote unquote traditional business and the young living business like Karen has started is that in a traditional business like mine, you can have great fun, you can work really hard, and you got to take some monstrous risks. But with a young living, you can work really hard and you can have great fun, but it's not a big risk. So probably worth considering. And uh, if you have any questions about the business uh, or there's any way that, that we can help you understand why it's not a pyramid scheme or uh, how you can be an effective communicator of uh, the value of essential oils and work on your value chain as you add value through the process of educating people, uh, marketing the products, and providing great customer service to the people that use them. Uh, we'd be glad to help you and you can contact us through gatewayessentialoils.com. Thanks.